بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصدر so now. We talked about Surah At-Teen having more of a style of, of uh, tabshir and this one having more of a style of indar, meaning good news versus uh, warning. The other thing that I, that's very important to highlight is Surah At-Teen mentioned ajr. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُوا Right? This surah doesn't mention any ajr. Ajr means reward. There Allah said, a reward that will never be discontinued, a reward that will never be forbidden from them. He uses those words. But in this surah, there's no mention of reward. The only mention is human beings are in loss, except these people. But he doesn't say, and these people will get Jannah, and these people will get everlasting life, all of it, nothing. No, no mention of what they will get. The only thing that's mentioned is, these people are failures, and these people escaped. This surah is not talking about higher levels of success. Other surahs talk about success. They deal with what jannat, what gardens, what treasures. That's the subject matter of other surahs. This surah, the subject of it is, who is not a failure. This surah is not about success, it's more about survival. What is the difference between talking about success and talking about survival? What's the difference between the two? You see, survival is something, when, you, when your survival is being questioned, you forget everything else. When you're drowning, when you're in a building with fire in it, right? When there's a danger headed your way, when your survival is in question, you forget everything. And when your survival is in question, there is no time for you to talk about your what? Success. There's no, there's no need to talk about success. I mean, if you're working in an office, and you wanna, you're talking to your boss about getting a promotion, what are you talking about? Success. But the building went on fire, and you say, let me finish talking about my promotion first. I haven't just finished negotiating with. Does that make any sense? No. Because you can't talk about success unless you've already secured your own survival. You understand? That's the urgency of this surah. The bare, bare, bare minimum. The survival. The survival. And you know, it doesn't make any sense for someone to talk about or be concerned with anything else other than survival, if they are not meeting the conditions of that survival. Imagine you have to get out of that building and there are four doors and all of those doors are locked. Until you unlock all four, you shouldn't be worried about anything else. These are the four locks. Al-Iman, Al-A'mal Salihah, Tawasib Al-Haq, Tawasib Al-Sabr. These are the locks to your survival. You have to unlock all of these things so you and I can survive. That's the, that's the, the scenario that's being drawn for us in this profound surah. I want to mention just some overview things. So within that, I want to say, uh, one of the comments is the difference between khusr, which is used here, and two other words that occur in the Qur'an that are similar. There is the word khasara. Okay? Like in Surah Nuh. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Not إِلَّا خُسْرًا, but إِلَّا خَسَارًا. So there's one word that's a variation of khusr. Another word that occurs in the Qur'an is khusran. Khusran. So you got three words now. You got khusr, you got khasara, and you got khusran. What's the difference between them and what's the benefit of using khusr in this surah? First of all, let's talk about the word khasara. Khasara means a loss above a pre-existing loss. There's already loss and you're adding to that loss. That is called khasara. By using, if Allah had used that word, then we would have already been in trouble and we're adding to that trouble. But Allah actually, by using khusr, a lesson we're learning is we're not in trouble. We're not in trouble, but we put ourselves in trouble. It's not like we were in trouble to begin with. So let's see how khasara, this word which means basically loss above a pre-existing loss, how it's used in the Qur'an. وَنُنَزِّلْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا 
وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَرَ We do not increase wrongdoers in nothing more but loss. Wrongdoers, are they already in loss? Yes. And Allah increases them. You see the, the way it's being used? Similarly, we find as I mentioned in Surah Nuh, وَاتَّبَعُوا And they followed. مَنْ لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَرَ The one who wouldn't increase him or, or his wealth or his children in anything more than loss. In other words, they ended up following people that are losers to begin with, and following them would make them even more of a loser. Now, this is the first benefit of not using khasar in this surah as opposed to using khusr. But then there's the word khusran, very powerful word. Khusran means incredible loss, excessive loss, unimaginable loss. You have to empower the meaning of that word because it's got an at the end. When you put an at the end of a word in Arabic, it empowers it. Like you know how we say ar-Rahman, it's not just merciful, it's incredibly merciful. When you say غضبان, it's not just angry, it's furious, it's enraged. So when you say خسران, it's empowered you know, loss. It's amazing amount of loss. Let's see how that's used in the Qur'an. Allah says, خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ He lost dunya and akhirah. That is ultimate loss. Isn't that the ultimate loss? What's so bad about that situation? It's not something light. He didn't just lose one thing, he lost both things. Dunya wal akhirah. So this is loss upon loss. This, lo- this is the ultimate loss. Al khusran al mubin. So because it's still loss, but not the ultimate loss, the word that is balanced and appropriate in this surah is in al insana lafi khusr. If it was in the hell, in the hellfire, then what would the word be? La khusran, lafi khusran, because that's the ultimate loss. You couldn't get any worse loss than that. We talked about the difference between two things: success and survival. Let's talk, we talked a little bit about survival, but we didn't talk about the other thing, which is what? Success. Every single human being, in their head, they have an understanding of what it means to be successful. Every single human. Doesn't have to be Muslim. Every human being. Doesn't have to speak your own language. Every culture, every society, every man, woman, and child aspires to something that they consider success. For your kid, it may be getting a good grade. Success. For you it may be a promotion or getting a job or making a lot more money than you do now or getting a certain car or marrying a certain person or buying a house, whatever it may be. There's something in your head that you consider success. And there are some people you look at and you don't even have to think about it. As soon as you see them, the the thought that crosses your mind is, that guy's pretty successful. Now look, let's take some some ancient examples. Who had the celebrity crib in ancient Egypt at the time of Musa a.s.? Firaun, huh? You could see his house from miles away. I mean, that's some pretty good architecture. It's still around. Right? It's pretty solid foundation. It's a world monument. And yet, is he a success? One of the biggest examples of failure. And look at Qarun in the Quran. Does he have a nice, big enough vault that people have to carry the keys to? But horrible failure. Then on the other hand, you have you know, if somebody gets deported from a country, somebody gets deported, you would consider that a failure. It's pretty embarrassing and humiliating, isn't it? Was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam expelled, literally deported from Mecca? He was. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had to live in a cave, eating off of shrubs. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest example of success, and yet he's living, and if you saw somebody living like that today, you would not think success. That's not what would cross your mind. If somebody gets kicked out of their home, they become homeless, it's a failure. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Does he get expelled from his home? He does. And yet, the, one of the greatest examples of success in human history. What are we learning from these examples? We're learning that the way we think about success and failure is not the way Allah wants us to think about success and failure. The, the lesson to learn in this surah is all human beings are in a desperate need to survive. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Human beings are drowned in loss. Human beings are lost. They're in loss, immersed in it. What does that tell you? That tells you that there are no exceptions. There are no exceptions. Allah doesn't say, إِنَّ الْكَافِرَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Some of us commented, you know, الْإِنسَانَ أَيْ الْكَافِرِ We'll talk about that. That the human being, it's referring to the kafir. When Surah Al-Asr was revealed, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Those who only heard that much said, what are we going to do? Until the exception came and gave them relief. So this exception becomes critical because this becomes a matter of our survival. 
This becomes a matter of our survival. And if we don't address this, then there's no point talking about success. There is no success then. We have to rearrange our thinking in regards to the demands that are being placed on us in, regard, in, in terms of this surah.